Hey there guys, and welcome back to Mount Hunter 3 Ultimate. Remember when I said in the last episode that we're gonna go after the Baryoth after the uh, Rathalos? Well, I completely forgot about this particular mission. Yep, we get to go after the Durambaros again. <sighs> well, just, let's just get it over with. Uh, you may have noticed already the fancy new weapon strapped to my back, which is in fact the Rathalos Longsword. So now that I actually do have a competent fire weapon, I'm hoping that this is going to go a little bit better than the uh, previous attempt in which I died twice. Then again, I did have a a weaker weapon then. I didn't have my Shakalakas to back me up. So I hope things go well this time around. And if not, then I'm just destined to... Forever suck against Durambaros. And where is he? It's kind of hard to overlook something that huge. Alright, he must be in 7 then. If he's not in 1 and he's not in 2, then that's pretty much the only place he can go. Because this area has plenty of land for him to work with, but he never goes to 4. He goes to 1, 2, 7 and 10 and that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, there he is. Come on, you big lug. Alright, this is gonna be good. I'm still not entirely sure what beef he has with me, because Durambaros is a herbivore. So it's not like he'd have any reason to fight me for food or anything. Maybe he's just super duper territorial. But still, wouldn't that only... Like, affect other Durambaroses? Durambarai, whatever the hell the plural is. Because why would the hunter be a threat to his territory when he's obviously not a Durambaros? I mean, do animals actively drive other animals out of their territory? I'm pretty sure they don't. It's just animals of the same species, I think. So, yeah, with Durambaros being herbivore and all, his behavior in this game does not make sense in the slightest. But whatever, I'll kill him regardless. Alright, go and do the spin. Damn it. I thought I could get in. Oh well. Just stay back. Don't do anything stupid. Because stupid tends to get you killed. And... Oh, oh we thought it was going to go up into the air, but this works as well. Just need to get that tail damaged. Because... Even though it is probably the hardest part of the Durambaros to hit because he's moving it around all the time. If you break the tail once, you can mine it after he does the giant backflip. And if you break it twice, it just comes off altogether. Kind of ruining a couple of his moves and you can carve it. So, yeah. Oh, crap. Oh, this is going to be bad. Oh, that actually didn't do as much damage. Alright. Just better take one of these before we pulls off another surprise move. Better to be safe than to be sorry. And I was sorry very, very much in the last Durambaros episode. Oh well. Come on, you bastard. Slice open your gut with my giant flame katana. And it's also got a little bit of Rathian in it, I believe, because that green part on the sheath, that's not Rathalos. And, oh crap. I was gonna just gonna do the spin again. Okay then. And I will stand back and watch him go. And Cha Cha and Kayamba are caught in the middle. Don't do anything stupid, guys. Oh, away he goes. Alright, get some hits in on the head. Because I can't really reach his tail right now. Well, maybe I could have, but he probably would have gotten up just as I got to it. So it would have kind of ruined it. And besides, the horns can and need to be broken as well, so why not target those? Even though that doesn't really make him weaker in any way, because if he does his charge move, you're still gonna get hit, even though the horns are broken. <sighs> what I also really hate about fighting this guy is that when you get, when you get like, underneath him, you really can't see shit. You have no idea what's going on or what he's gonna do. Because, really... To expect the monster's attacks, you have to look at their visual cues. 
However, it's kind of hard to tell those visual cues when all you can see is basically their underbelly and their legs. He's just too big for his own damn good. And at least it's not an unstable quest, so no other monster is going to come in and ruin my party. Because that happens all the time in G-Rank missions now, and it's so annoying. I was doing uh, G-Rank Drambaros on vacation last week, and freaking Devil Joe showed up. That was not a fun fight. Especially not in Area 7 of this place. It's way too small for two gigantic monsters. Anyway, it seems that he is now raging. Oh, thought that was going to hit me. But it does not. Nice. Oh, crap. Yeah, I walked into that one. Stupid backdash move. Oh, jeez. Okay, tremor resistance also really helps against this guy. Oh, crap. Oh, no, no. This is going to hurt. Oh, actually. Thought that was going to be worse. Ah, come on. I was just stunned. Is he just going to keep me in stun lock forever? Did he watch my Ben 10 Omniverse LP to learn eye guy strategies? Why am I still mentioning that LP? Because it really wasn't that mentionable. Damn it. Okay, I am getting sick and tired of this guy already. I wish I had a fire gun lance. There is a Rathalos gun lance. It's pretty good, but for some reason I don't have it. Or I guess I wasn't really that good with gun lances yet at this point in the LP, but they've since moved on to be my main weapon. Oh, crap. Yeah, there ain't no dodging a body check with a body like that. What's he gonna do? Oh, jeez. Sure, go ahead and do that, please. And I will retreat to a safe distance. And get my stamina back up. Look at the pretty backflip. I'm still not sure that's physically possible. Durambros is definitely defying the laws of physics with everything he does. Oh, there go the horns. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's new. I'm pretty sure he didn't do that before. Alright, so even when you break his horns, this guy is dangerous. He will lunge at you and try to bite you, even though he doesn't want to eat you, so why would he bite you? Oh, ah, okay. Gonna go for the tail. You gotta crack it. I'm not sure if you can get it by just hitting this part of the tail or you need to... Oh jeez, who's chucking bombs? Freaking cats. Don't go and ruin my hunt for me. Especially if they're freaking felvine bombs. Those are even worse. Because those send all the cats in the area into a freaking frenzy and they come after you non-stop. Until you kill them. I don't want to kill them. Because they're kinda cute. Even though I hate cats in real life with a passion, I am really a dog person, hate cats. Still, I would not want to kill these cats because they're cute. And they're white. And white cats are good. At least until you hit them, in, at which point they turn into right douchebags. Even when the monster hits them. So really their rage towards you is not at all justified. Oh crap. Oh. Thought it was going to bring it straight down, but for some reason he decided to deviate a little bit and just slightly miss me. How kind, Durambaros. Come on, hold that thing still. He really does not want to hold that thing still. And of course it turns away. I hate this monster so much. I wish I did go for the barry off instead. And Oh, I actually got in. Alright, whoop his legs. Hope he trips. There we go, he trips. Alright, now go for the back, because that is his weak spot. These weird tree stump looking humps. Pretty strange. And, <clears throat> you know what's actually kind of funny about the Durambaros is that he's not actually supposed to look like this. And the, uh, Durambaros. I think there's a picture on the wiki somewhere of like a young Durambaros, and young Durambaros is all red. Kind of looks like the subspecies of the rust Durambaros. So, really, they are supposed to be red. The only reason this guy's all green and brownish is because he just has moss growing all over him. So, I'm not really sure how that happens. Generally, I think moss doesn't really grow on things that move. 
So I'm not really sure how he got his ass covered in moss. But yeah, it's not his natural coloration. Come on, tail, just break. I know long swords are not the best weapon for breaking something, but still. I'd say I've been hitting it a fair amount of time. Alright, Area 1, taking the fight to the water. Aptonos freaking out. Why? It's a fellow herbivore. Oh, maybe that's why, because he's gonna charge into you like a freaking bulldozer. Why are you so mean, Durambaros? Yeah, sure, go and do that again. And I get in. I'm actually getting good at that. Nice. Maybe Durambaros will not have to be the... Oh, crap. Oh, I thought he jumped up to the air, but he just swung himself away. Thank goodness. Yes, yes. You don't, he doesn't really have a whole lot of different moves if you look at it. He has the tail stomp, the charge, the spin, which can end in a couple different ways. That's basically it. Oh, and that one. Don't know why he didn't pull that one out of the bag before. But it's not the best move he has. Oh. Oh, crap. Damn it. Cha Cha, you knock him down. Do something. Oh. Wow. I tell him to do it and he does it. Thank you, Cha Cha. Or Kayamba. Now I have to pretend I'm not picking favorites with those guys. Oh, nice. There go the humps. Now we have an open wound to attack him. And I'm pretty sure breaking those things makes him even more vulnerable there. However, to reach that, you pretty much need to knock him down. Because just look at those things. There's no way I'm reaching up there with a sword while he's standing up. So, I'm putting down a trap. Because pitfall traps will put him slightly in the ground so that you can actually hit the humps. Come on, get in. Oh, come on. Stop being such a pain and just get in the damn trap. Well, maybe he might spin towards it. Yes. There we go. Excellent. Alright. And time to whoop his ass for some easy damage. I might have been able to capture him at this point, actually. Come to think about it. Because he's in a trap. He's drooling. So... I'm not really sure how that works, because usually when monsters drool, they're tired, and you'd think you'd be able to capture them when they're tired, but no, you actually have to get them to limp as well. So, yeah, don't just go putting down traps willy-nilly, because that's just going to be wasting them. And... Hmm. I thought you could mine those as well, actually. But nope, it's just the tail. <coughs> And that's how we learn. <coughs> oh jeez, hope I'm not getting sick. That'd be one hell of a thing to bring home from the crappy vacation in Belgium. Sickness. <sighs> well, I guess the smell of cow manure is not that good for you if you spend a whole freaking week in it. Never again. I really don't see how people can call that a vacation in the first place. I mean, okay, maybe I might be a bit spoiled here, but for me, vacation is go to some luxury, look lu like luxurious hotel with a big pool and all sorts of things to do and a 24-hour bar where you can get drinks and food and all-inclusive and all that stuff. That's my idea of a vacation. Not sitting in some crappy house in Belgium with old bunch of people and you have to do everything yourself and there's nothing in the nearby area to do that's just horrible who'd want to put themselves through that I sure as hell don't hell if I have to choose between going on that vacation or just staying at home I think I just stay at home because you're basically doing the same stuff oh come on get out of the freaking in between area of Durambaros Come on, get out of there. Up oh, there he comes. Just stop being an asshole and just drop dead. Or not. Just keep on living for a moment more before I slay you. Sure, do your little dance. Don't care, that's real easy to avoid. 
see I've pretty much broken I think I cracked his tail already as well so all that remains is to lop that thing off and I must say aiming at his legs when he's doing this can be pretty hard sometimes because he is moving so especially with the more stationary weapons like the gun lance I do sometimes have a little trouble tripping him oh there we go can mine his tail what do we get? Duram tail case. Alright then. Ah, damn it. That's mean. I was mining your tail, asshole. Okay, sure. Maybe it does hurt having a pickaxe driven into the flesh. Well, is his tail fleshy? I'm not really sure. It seems like just one big lump of bone. But then again, that would probably hurt as well if you get a pickaxe driven straight into your bones. Ugh. That's... Stuff you don't even see in, like, the worst Western movie. You know, where maybe like, like an evil prospector. And the cowboy shows up to, I don't know, do something with his mind. And he's, like, attacking him with a pickaxe. That's pretty nasty. Although I don't remember that ever happening. Oh, come on! Freaking, I hate that. Sometimes I really wish that... This place was just one big open area without all the loading screens, but I have to understand the technical limitations of the current day consoles. And, hell, maybe if there's a Monster Hunter 4 on uh, PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah, I know Monster Hunter 4 is going to be on 3DS already, but uh, maybe Monster Hunter 4 HD or Monster Hunter 5 they're like on next gen consoles then that might actually involve just wide open worlds without loading screens in between I mean that's basically what they're doing with Dead Rising 3 which I will admit looks amazing but I'm not gonna buy an Xbox One just for Dead Rising 3 because it really doesn't have anything else that interests me plus all the crappy things you have to do and agree to and they can do with your system and whatever I don't care about that so PS4 it is also because PS4 basically has all the franchises that I love like God of War, Uncharted, Infamous, Starhawk even though chances of getting a sequel to that are next to none which is quite sad because let's face it Starhawk is a unique game nothing like it Ah, stabbing in the open wound. Lovely. Make you pay for all the pain that the other Dramboros put me through, even though I killed him as well. So technically, that dead is sad. Oh, sweet, he's limping. And only like half the time that the other one took. We're like 15 minutes into the hunt. Nice. Ah, love it when a plan comes together. Or at least when I learn... Oh, where did he go? Oh, seven. Right then. Just this area is just not the right one for fighting him in. I mean, when you design a monster that lives in this area and then you only make it so that he can go to four out of the ten areas in this hub, so to speak, that's just poor choosing. I mean, why not make this make it so that this guy can swim? Then he'd have a lot more movement space in here. Or just maybe have him like walk along the bottom like a hippo or something. That's what hippos do, right? I'm pretty sure I saw that on National Geographic Channel once. And if I could just get the tail off before I kill him, that'd be absolutely dandy. No, Bdahabar, you will not sting me and paralyze me. They just love to do that at the worst possible times. Nope, nope, not gonna get me. I know all your moves now, you can't surprise- Oh, sweet, leaving again. That tail must come off. I'm not really sure how, or what weapons are the easiest to get that tail off with. I seem to be able to do it pretty well with a gun lance. Then again, gun lances are pretty good at breaking things. Not so much cutting, but definitely breaking. Alright, area 10 is where we will finish this fight. And that's another thing that's even worse about him. He never goes to area 10 unless he's about to die. So basically, he's going to be swapping between 
1, 2, and 7 over and over until he's almost dead, in which case he will go to 10. Oh, sweet, I'll carve this guy. I can always use a couple more monster fluids, but of course I don't get one of those. It sucks. Because you need monster fluids and their high rank and G rank equivalents for a whole bunch of stuff, actually. Alright, he's sleeping. If I had a gun lance, I would Wyvern fire him. Can't mine his tail while he's sleeping, that's kind of bummer. Alright then, right in the hump. Oh, sweet! Well, that's kind of a sweet finish, I guess. Would've been better if it was like with the final slash of the spirit combo, but still, I'll take it. The beast is dead. And I'll take whatever I can find from his body. Like a moss plate, and another moss plate. So that's probably his most common drop, I think. And a shell. Yes, thank you for the defense boost, Chacha. That's kind of, uh... Way too late. Unless I need the defense boost to take on all the kitty cats in this play in this freaking area. And there is a mining spot in Area 10 somewhere. Oh, there it is. Because I still have those pickaxes that were in the box. Oh, come on, I don't need whetstones. Oh, that's just perfect. Oh, a stone. Beautiful. Machalite ore. Okay, I'll take Machalite ore. That's always good. Oh, and that's it. Yeah, uh, all right, we're done. Well, that went a lot better than I expected. Still a little bit on the long side, but it could have gone a lot worse. Just go and watch episode 32 to see how it could have gone a whole lot worse. Jeez, a whole bunch of bone husks that I don't even need. Hump, horn, all right, that's nice. Sell. Get some money. Oh, and it's slightly bigger than the previous one. Alright, now in the next episode we will go after the Baryoth and kill him to make ice weapons to fight the Diablos with. So yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode of Monster Hunter. Bye bye!